It's time for the weekly cover price top 10. And there is absolutely no surprise as what's coming in at number one. Let's take a look at the entire list up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comic coming to you with another video. Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out the description of this video for links to my whatnot, my Instagram, my email, and my eBay store. And if you do see an item you see in the eBay store, reach out to me. Um, you might be able to get a better deal if we do it off of eBay. Um, so uh, we're going to go through the cover price top 10 list. And this is a list that cover price produces every week. Cover price is a uh, grading service of comic books, and they're the only service that grades both uh, graded books as well as raw books. And um, I have no affiliation with them. I just like to do these lists and see which books are moving in the marketplace. Now, if you're kind of new to these kinds of lists or new to delving into the comic book hobby, these are not the books to buy right now because they are um, increasing in value as we speak. Generally speaking, books calm down a little bit. And a lot of these books, news propels them into the um, top 10 list. However, if you do find these books for a really good deal, um, you know, in back issue bins or at garage sales or something, these are books that you, you might want to pick up. And one of them would be really easy to find. So let's just jump into the list. And coming in at number 10 on the list is Doom number one. This has been all over the list since the book came out. This is the second print by Sanford Green. It's a virgin variant of the A cover to uh, the first print. And you can see this book at going anywhere like $60 to $90 raw, too soon to have graded copies. And this book just came out last week. And the first print version of this book was going gangbusters. It appears Marvel took notes when they greenlit a second print. Did I get the second print? I don't remember. Um, I did get, uh, one of the variant, you know, non-ratio covers just to have it because I want to read it. I haven't read it yet. Um, the cover was universally praised and somehow they improved it. Releasing a virgin ratio variant as a second print is a bold strategy, but paying off in the aftermarket is any indication. And again, this is what I just said a little bit earlier. Be careful of jumping in on this book. This book is on the hot list because everybody wants it right now. S demand is high. Supply is, it's a one in 25 ratio. So it's somewhat limited perhaps, and uh, there's no guarantee of this. And again, don't uh, take any financial advice from me. Um, make your own decisions, do your own homework. My belief is that, you know, the, the demand will eventually cool down a little bit. What the supply will be at that time is another question. Are people going to want to move the book? Let's go to number nine on the list. And this is a book we haven't seen for a hot minute. This is Captain America number 25 from 2014 it's the first time that sam wilson becomes captain america and of course this is one of more than one book on the list there are other books on the list that are propelled onto this list because of the trailer for captain america brave new world i keep having to check myself because they changed the uh, title from new world order to brave new world at any rate this is a book oh my god i think about what i spent on this when i bought a, a raw copy that wasn't even a nine eight um Near mint copy, 15 bucks. You know, it's probably can get it under $20 and under a hundred dollars now for a 9.8. Let's look at the history of this slab in a 9.8, right? And if we look at the census, there are 1,500 on the census, 700 9.8s, 478 9.6s, which is kind of interesting because at this point in time, 9.6s, we'll, we'll take a look at the 9.6s as well, even 9.4s. People were getting this book graded in any condition. I forget what grade I got back on this. I think I sold it for a loss. But you can see, right around $100. And this is a book that was kind of, uh, you know, jump, had one jump here, and it really didn't sell. And then was selling consistently $70, $80. And then, hello, comic boom, bam, jumps up to $526. And then it has been on the receipt. It had a hasty decline. I mean, it was half that before the end of 2021 and has continued on the downward trend um, with a little bit of spiking uh, in the last year. And we've known forever that this movie's coming out. 
and that Sam Wilson, who has Fal as Falcon had his first appearance in Captain America 117, was going to be an integral part of this. And it hasn't really helped the sales of, of these books. They, they've kind of, you know, I mean, going from yeah, like a, it was a solid $200 book. And then, it, I mean, now it's a $100 book, which is not unusual for books that had news that fueled them during the boom. There's kind of that, there's books that went up during the boom because there were keys and people wanted them. And there are books that went up during the boom. And at the same time, they went up because they had spec value behind them. This is one of them. It returns to the top 10. It is a pretty cool cover, uh, but it's a modern book and there. There should be, I would think there would have been more than 1500 out there, but I want to take a look quickly at the nine, six graded uh, history and where we are now. Now we're at case cost. I mean, it was, it jumped a nine, six, you know, was over $200 at one point. And, you know, it's kind of settled in, you know, winding its way back down to case costs. So, and that's one sale in the last six months recorded here in Go Collect. There are probably other sales who are best offer accepted kind of situations on eBay, but be that as it may, let's go to number eight on the list. And it's Wolverine number 88. Oh, by the way, I'm sure next week the list will be completely different because as I record this video, I am 45 and a half hours away from seeing Deadpool and Wolverine. And I'm really excited. Um, and I think comic book collectors are as well, fans of the MCU, uh, fans of these characters. And this is a book, it's their first meeting. All right, first meeting of Wolverine and Deadpool, their first battle, and um, the their facsimiles coming very soon. No surprise um, that you know around the movie. This is a book you're going to have to pay up for if you want a raw copy, upwards of you know over fifty bucks, and then nine eights going for about four hundred. And this has been on the list recently as well. Right. It was a decent book, you know, even around one hundred dollars before the boom. And then it jumped all the way up to over seven hundred. And you can see it hasn't come back down to where it was. I mean, I would be, I guess, about one hundred and fifty books of it returned to where it was in, in the pre boom prices. But no, it hasn't. It's still upwards of five hundred dollars for a nine point eight. And we can see, you know, like climbing sales like. Usually it's been in the foreign range of 530 sale, fixed sale on eBay. What will this book be going for in a month? That is the question as well. Um, this is a tough book to get in a 9.8. If we look at the numbers, and I, I don't know if I need to refresh this, there are 2,875 universal copies, only 22% of the 9.8s. And this is a book from the 90s, um, 94 more nine sixes than nine eights. And part of the reason, and I had a problem when I had a copy, there's a cardboard insert inside the front and back cover. And it is, it, it leaves an impression, which can, um, it, it, for me, it I could not, no matter what I did to press it out, tack iron roller bolt, pressing it again and again, couldn't get it out. Um, so that I think, makes it more difficult to get a nine eight and there's um we can see there's kind of a jump right the nine six it's about a buck and a half the nine eight is 400 so there is a premium you're paying for nine eight because it's harder to get in that grade but people are still paying pretty competitive prices for anything in the nines and i if we look at our list we talked about sam wilson in falcon and winter soldier and then in this new movie when Deadpool and Wolverine were first announced, uh, this book was on fire. That should be was first announced because it's listed in a singular title, even though it's two individuals in the title. It maintained that heat for some time before cooling dramatically. But now that we're in the final stretch before release, it's heating up again. This book marks the first direct meeting and battle between the two titular characters. And if the marketing is any indication, we're in for some serious battles in less than two weeks. Less than two weeks? Bro, two days. This is the, an article that just came out this week. We are right there. Right? This movie is coming out on Thursday, bro. The fan base is returning to the beginning before we see the inevitable end on the big screen. I think that Deadpool and Wolverine, Jackman and Reynolds are going to be back for Secret Wars. We shall see. Let's go to number seven on the list. And this is the number one book from last week, X-Force number one. 
It's the first appearance of GW Bridge, and that's what has propelled this book into the spotlight. You can still get a high grade book. You know, it's not even 10 bucks, look, 75 last sale in a 98. There are so many copies of this, and the census count isn't really all that high. Last week it was 2851, and it's, uh, well, I guess. I mean, maybe this refreshed anyway. Yeah, it did I because I restarted my computer day. 2851, only 22% of them 9.8s. A lot of books lower. I mean, gosh, a lot of 8.0s. And those have no value. And even if we look at, you know, at the comic boom, it got up to almost $300, but it was quickly down to the $100 level. That was, I don't know what propelled this. Was that the second Deadpool movie maybe? It's not even, you no, know, because you wouldn't buy a graded copy because you wouldn't have the Deadpool card. Maybe because the cable was, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, the Shatterstar and whatnot were in that. I, I don't, I have no idea why this this jumped like this. And then it's, this is a book that has had, and I think we'll have a hard time breaking $100, even in a 9.8, because there's so many of them. Now, let's look at what the article says about this. X-Force has been pretty hot lately, thanks to Cable's appearance in X-Men 97. Mm -mm. And the new Deadpool movie is about to drop. And now for an all new reason, thanks to the Captain America New World Order trailer, the internet is in full on sleuth mode. The reason is Giancarlo Esposito was spotted in the trailer doing some damage, but no one knows who the heck he's playing. He even came out and said and teased, no one has guessed the role yet, which is quite intriguing. Said internet sleuths have been working overtime and appear to be zeroing in on him playing a version of GW Bridge who first appeared in this book. We'll have to wait a little longer to know for sure, but the aftermarket is a way to find out. Now, yeah, Giancarlo Esposito said no one's guessed it yet. Everyone's guessing GW Bridge, so put two and together. If you believe what he's saying, and I think that might be true, he's not playing GW Bridge. I think he might be playing a completely new character that doesn't even appear in the comic books, much like uh, Phil Coulson. And I don't know, maybe he's playing Holland Tunnel or GS Bridge. Who knows? Um the but this book you'll find it in dollar bins and i mean i i don't know how many copies i have of this i, I try to sell them for like five bucks i'm not going to charge ten dollars for this book um just because it, 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 it's never worth ten dollars there are just so many of them out there let's go to number six on the list and this one barbaric number one from vault in 2021, I don't know. Near mint copies, 20 bucks. Maybe I, I'm assuming it's been optioned, but I don't have the 411 on that. Somebody look at the title and think, what? I just picked up a barbaric number one a month and some change ago. Well, you're close. The recent barbaric run focuses on Owen as a child, a barbarian cursed to wander the lands, doing good with his enchanted battle axe in this series. A little confusing, but look at the recent run as a prequel. That's why why that's important is that it was recently announced that A and E Television greenlit a barbaric series with Sam Clayton and Patrick Stewart in leads roles and Michael Bay potentially attached. For those of you who read the comics and know of Patrick Stewart, the mind games begin immediately on just how hilarious that could get. But whenever there's news of a series being optioned, it typically sees a boost in the aftermarket. A and E, I, I'm trying to remember the last time I watched something on A and E. I think it was like the biography of Paul Lind. I mean, I, I, but Patrick Stewart, Patrick Stewart is Patrick Stewart. Um, so I have no opinion. And even if we look at nine eights, there, I mean, what there? I'm surprised there are even 82 copies graded. 72 of them nine eights. And that's a book that's been hovering around 50 bucks. I guess if, if a big, if huge, if, if this is series series comes to fruition and it is popular, this, you know, it'll be worth more than $65. I can't imagine a lot of them out there because this is from vault comics. Um, it came out during the boom. I, I I don't even think I have a copy of this thing. Let me see.
Do I have a copy of Barbaric number one? I do not. I do not have a copy of Barbaric number one for what it's worth. And uh, but it's a thing I'll look for in collections of back issue bins, um, you know, dollar bins and such. But because uh, that's what I like to do about these lists, it, it kind of ingrains this information and these covers in my head uh, more than just watching the list by processing it. You know, if I see this book again and I see it for a couple bucks, pick it up. Sounds like it might be an interesting read as well. If anybody if anybody's read this comic, um, let me know what you thought in the, the comments. Um, might be worth trying, trying to find it in trade or digitally if it's a good read. Anyway, you know, imagine that reading the comic books. Um, let's go to number five on the list. Well, of course, New Mutants 98, the first appearance of Deadpool. We all know about this book. If you know anything about comic books, um, you know, you're paying lots of money for it. Hundreds of dollars in any condition, over a thousand dollars in a nine, eight. And, um, there are 25,000 copies on the census. Um, there's a 10, 12, nine nines, and only... 17% of them are 9.8s, but this is a book you'll get, it makes sense to get slabbed, you know, what, like in mid-grade up. I mean, look, $250 for a 5.5, and if you have a newsstand, even better probably. But this is a book, you know, so I bump with the first thing, and it's, I mean, it was always, I mean, look at this, like right out of the gate, you know, Deadpool became a popular character uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and then it bumped up, then we, I guess, this is first movie news up to 800 and it maintained that. And then boom, it went up to over well over 2000 and it's been retreating, but we can see like at the end of 2020, right? It was a thousand dollar book. So it's kind of in line. I think, I think maybe it made it just a little bit more after the movie, but this is not a flash in the pan come and go character. And I do think they're going to be using Deadpool going forward. So, I don't see this dipping below a thousand in a nine eight. Um, so you see, somebody paid twenty two hundred. Does that make sense? Wow! Wow! Oh, good for that seller. And if we go to our reasoning here in number five on the list, as of writing this eleven days, the Deadpool Wolverine drop. Am, am I wrong? It's coming out this week, right? I have my tickets. I'm like, I, I already had something amiss on my calendar. It's coming out like in two friggin' days, is it not? Oh my gosh, I'm so I'm trying to find my. Where is that's more recent than that. Where is I'm trying to find the um. Da, 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 da. My my tickets to see the movie. No. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. Here it is. This is far. There it is. Oh, it is next week. I have my head so far up my butt. I thought... Originally, I thought... I'm like, oh, it's the day before the Olympic opening ceremony. I'm like... Then I realized I thought the Olympic opening ceremony was like the 19th not the 26th. And I'm like, well, Deadpool's still, you know, coming out on the 19th slash. I can see it on the 18th. It's a week away. Oh, wow. So, anywho, that totally changes my week. I was literally looking forward to that. Now I got to put it off a week. Man. Mm. I am, I am, I am out of it. And that, oh, that's going to be a busy week. So, that uh, that that will lead into my um, my little comic book hiatus. Anyway, so we're a week away. Yeah, nine days away, not two days away. Disregard everything I said earlier in this video, and you probably already typed in the comments, "You idiot!" It's next week. I'm realizing that now. 
Okay. I I feel I feel um I feel foolish. And I'm not gonna edit this out because this is kind of fun. You can all laugh at me and I'll get views. Anyway, let's move on to number four on the list. And it's Hulk number two from 2008. This is the true first appearance of the Red Hulk. He was in the um cover of issue number one, but not in the story. And if you haven't seen the trailer, um crawl out from under your rock and you know, watch the Brave New World trailer. I don't think you can give spoiler warnings on trailers, but Harrison Ford is plays General Ross and he is Red Hulk. Um, this I think has been an undervalued book for a long time, still in the $25 range, but it's up over a hundred dollars in a nine, eight. I'm interested to see what the graded sales have been. This is the history. It's never, it never, I mean, it did jump up to what 300 bucks, but it's been pretty erratic. Um, number one is the more desired copy, but Hey, we still have, um, number uh, number two here, his first appearance. It's, it's also a pretty good storyline. So um, I'm still recovering from my stupidity. Well, issue number one of this run receives the majority of the attention due to featuring the Red Hulk front and center on the cover. And being marked as his first appearance, this book shouldn't be forgotten. It's the first appearance of the Red Hulk in the story as opposed to the cover shot. Sort of like uh, Bishop. Um, but Bishop did appear in 282. It also features a dynamic cover that encapsulates the fear characters felt when Red Hulk started popping off. While it says issue number two on the cover, it often works with issue number one as a 1A, 1B situation with a recent trailer featuring a shot of the Red Hulk. Fans have been hot on the trail, associated key books, including this one. So, um, yeah, it, 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 a buck and a quarter and a nine, eight. Um, I think people kind of have forgotten about this book. Let's go to number three. Number three, Doom number one. Once again, uh, 9.8 is about 150 bucks, 175. Man, this book has been, this is showing no signs of stopping. And um, there are still only 141 copies on the census. And again, this is what I've said about early, um, jumping early on the 9.8s. Supply is low. Demand is definitely outpacing supply. But there's plenty of opportunity there, 15 signature 9.8s. Um, people will be submitting this book. It is a thicker book. Might be a little tougher to get a 9.8 in. Um, but I'm imagining, you know, just organically the way things work, a lot of these have been going into pre-screens. So, um, yeah, we all know MF Doom, yada, yada, yada. Um, occasionally we see books that just have the it factor. This book is one of them. Despite not being the launch of a major event or first appearance, it's dominating. That's what happens when solid writing, art, and references come together to form a book like this. It's been hot since it dropped and hasn't cooled down since. With the second print Virgin Marian right around the corner, many collectors uh, opted to secure a copy of the book to slap it on the wall right next to it. So we did see the Virgin as number 10 on the list. This is number three. What's number two? Fantastic. Four, number 94. First appearance of Agatha Harkness. Um, and first mention the name Franklin Richard. She she was his babysitter back in the day. And like uh, she's not on the cover here, but if you're not familiar is she was one of these women, any woman that was like older than 30, probably in a Marvel comic book in the 60s, when Jack Kirby drew it was, or Steve Ditko, was an absolute crone. They looked like they were 200. Um, Aunt May, for instance. Like, how old was Aunt May supposed to be? I mean, unless she like smoked three packs of cigarettes a day, um, she looked she looked weathered in that. I mean, you know, Peter Parker was a teenager. I mean, his aunt was like 70? Whatever. I guess it's possible, um, but the uh, you see about a hundred dollars for a very fine copy. Hard to get copies in better condition than that. Um, nine O's going for three sixty, and I took a look at uh, I think the nine O historically because you know nine eights are so rare. And this is a book. It was a hundred dollars until one division. And it jumped up to $1,100 in November 2021. And it's since retreated. It won't go all the way back. It, Agatha's getting her own show and everything. And right now it's eh, about $350. All right. So WandaVision debuted over three years ago. It laid the groundwork for Agatha Harkness, who first appeared in this book, to take the spotlight in a future series. That was the plan. Well, plans typically never go according to plan. And after numerous reshoots, title changes, etc., we finally got a trailer for the Agatha series promised to the community years ago. The, now, remember, we're in this period, and we're just starting to emerge from it. I guess next week we're kind of going to fully emerge. This period that, on the heels of the pandemic, 
the actors and writers strikes shut down new production in Hollywood. So movies that were in the pipeline were in production. They were starting to film were delayed. And that's why we're going to see very little this year, but then we're going to get a slew of things next year from both Marvel and DC. And I imagine very shortly in coming weeks, we're going to get a lot of announcements um, from both Marvel and DC as to what future projects might be and some casting and that sort of thing. I mean, Captain America, um, Brave New World has taken forever to come out. Um, this, uh, you know, don't get started on Blade or Ironheart or some of these other projects that have been talked about for years. And then don't forget characters that have been completely forgotten uh, because, you know, Marvel kind of maybe retooling things a little bit. I mean, it's going to be two years since the Werewolf by Night special came out. At any rate, the first trailer dropped last week and is full of wacky off-the-wall shenanigans, but there is a deeper connection for which many fans will be tuning in. The book also features the first mention of Franklin Richards, the son of Reed and Sue of the Fantastic Four. Agatha played babysitter to the young fella, and fans feel like we're watching the connections to future marginal project, projects spry out, out in real time. Only time will tell, but until then, fans are taking another look at Agatha's first appearance. I mean, what is the... I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what the importance of Agatha going forward is. Will she be connected to the Fantastic Four? Will she take care of their kids? Um... I thought it would be kind of fun if in her brainwashed state, she actually was like the nanny for the Richards family. Um, and she didn't realize, you know, who she was. But um, yeah, this is a book that uh, flew to the heights. It's cooled down, but still, I mean, nine oh for 300 some odd dollars, even for 1960, whatever this is, 69. Is, um, is a 1970. Uh, yeah, January 70 is pretty solid. What is number one on the list? Uh, I said this last week. I was talking to one of my friends. I said, gee, I wonder what number one on the list will be next week. And of course, Hulk number one. First appearance of Red Hulk or first cover appearance of Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross's Red Hulk. This book is one of those books that has already been specced on time and time again. Um, ever since we, we got like a taste of where they were going to go and they were going to keep um, Thunderbolt Ross in the um, MCU that we might be going in the Red Hulk direction. And here we are. Um, high grade copies are getting close to on over 50 bucks and about 300 bucks for a 9.8, but still strong sales in 9.0 or better. And if we look at the census, um, <laughs> this is kind of interesting to see. You know, eh, it was a nice little book for a while, you know, got up to $100 and then pandemic says let's go to five hundred dollars and it's been kind of cooling off ever since but look at this right here we are two hundred dollars and then this is kind of interesting the trailer shot it up again we got a sale what what the i'm, I'm missing something here a sale in june of 479 dollars now it has but most of the other sales a lot in the 350 range right if i were pricing this book out in nine eight i'd probably say 350 would be fair um, and this, I, I thought that was, it was funny the way that the, um, trailer was constructed. They kind of went to black with titles and I'm waiting and waiting. I'm like, are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? And sure enough, we saw, um, the red Hulk and, uh, surprise, surprise. Wait, no, it's not. After years of waiting, the fan base finally got a trailer for Captain America, Brave New World. It did not disappoint. It didn't. I thought the trailer looked really compelling action, espionage, civil strife. The trailer had it all. Um, so did the Secret Invasion trailer. Yikes. Um, oh, and a one-second clip and roar from the long-awaited Red Hulk. Fans immediately scoured the internet searching for a copy of the first appearance as up until this point, the community had no solid confirmation he would appear. We still don't know the scale, if he's a hero, a follower, etc. Much can be inferred, but we know. But now we know he's coming, and does he sound angry? Um, I'd be interested to see if they follow the storyline where he kind of frames Bruce Banner uh, for a murder. If you haven't read the story, it's it's a good story um, by Ed, uh, by um, Jeff Loeb, uh, artwork by Ed McGinnis. So I always like to take a look at the um, runners up numbers 11 through 20 on the list. Uh, Deadpool number one, um, the Benjamin Sue, one in 25. Gromit's number two, one in 10. This has been a very popular new series. Um
and I'm reading stuff about the, 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 the um, rumors, uh, Omega Man number three, uh, rumors that Jason Momoa uh, may be Lobo in the Supergirl film. I think I think Lobo was in that comic book. That makes sense. Wolverine number one, limited series didn't make it, but his ongoing series, volume two did. Spawn number one, always going to be there. Watchmen number one, the, the trailer, we just got a red band trailer for the, that um, series of animated films. I think it's going to be more than one. I don't know if it's going to be two or more. This one has been sticking around. It's like his third week in the list. Um, Action Comics 1066 with Lobo. Kill All Immortals, uh, the one in 10. Succession meets John Wick with Immortal Vikings. This is a description that Dark Horse provides for the first issue of the series. It creates a lot of hype uh, this week. Story has already created tons of fans, and those fans are chasing the retailer incentive cover. And then Blood Hunt, of course, these red band Blood Hunt uh, homages to EC classics have been there. And Ain't No Grave by Scotty Young, um, released with no particularly large impact. The first issue received some mixed reviews, but nothing mind blowing. The second issue was more positively received, and it began to catch the eyes of many comic book fans. And it makes sense the third issue of the series is the one of the most popular releases. Especially true of the retailer incentive, one in 25, which features one of today's most popular cover artists, Scotty Young. As this issue picks up steam, you'll likely see fans chasing previous retailer incentives. And I wonder how many people got, retailers got 25 copies of Ain't No Grave, number three. So that will do it for this week's list. Um, as I completely juggle my schedule, I had my kids' orthodontic appointments on the wrong week. Uh, it's just... I can't believe that Deadpool and Wolverine is not this week. I thought it was this Thursday and I was gearing myself up for that. So hmm, whatever, we'll have to wait another week. Um, and, you know, bash me all you want in the comments because I don't know what I was thinking. At any rate, I'd like to thank you all for stopping by, having some fun with this uh, series. Uh, in the meantime, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, which will be the week that Deadpool and Wolverine is going to come out. Until next time, enjoy your comics.